attempting to get the incumbent. In Chicago tonight, this is Rich Samuels. And now I'm joined by Congressman Bobby Rush of the 1st Congressional District, State Senator Barack Obama, and State Senator Donnie Trotter. And we should note there is a fourth candidate running in the Democratic primary. He is George Roby, a retired Chicago police officer. It was our judgment that viewers would benefit most from a discussion with the major candidates only. And I welcome you all to Chicago tonight. Congressman Rush, in endorsing Senator Obama, the Chicago Tribune wrote of you that he touts experience and seniority, but his approach to problems has not produced many results. And the Daily Southtown, in endorsing Senator Obama, said of you, after four terms, we don't believe he has accomplished enough on behalf of his district. Respond to these statements that you've not been very productive. Well, in both instances, I certainly think that those are probably some of the most uh, misguided uh, opinions that I've uh, witnessed in the media, uh, particularly in, as it relates to endorsements. Uh, my record is outstanding. Uh, my record is uh, for, uh, open for public inspection. I believe that the uh, president uh, certainly has endorsed me based on my record. I believe uh, that the uh, AFL-CIO has endorsed me based on my record. I believe that the uh, 100 uh, and plus uh, African-American ministers have endorsed me based on my record. I believe that the Reverend Jesse Jackson endorsed me based on my record. I believe that over 125 women leaders in the first congressional district based on uh, endorsed me based on my record. My record, I brought back over $1.5 billion, uh, returned the tax monies of my constituents back to uh, the district. Uh, I've helped create jobs, expand uh, businesses, create businesses in the 1st Congressional District. I have an excellent record. Let me just tell you, uh, Phil, one of the things that I'm most proud of is the $20 million uh, that I brought back in the last two years to wire public schools and libraries for the internet so that our children will have access to computers. South Lakeshore Drive right now, it's improved uh, based on uh, the federal dollars that I brought back into the first congressional district. South Lakeshore itself is being repaired right now. Construction crews, construction equipment is there working based on federal dollars that I brought back into the first congressional district. We have an empowerment zone uh, in the first congressional district uh, that came with a, a hundred million dollar uh, 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 grant from the federal government. Co Congressman, I know you can go through. A, I know you can go through, a, through through a litany of your accomplishments, and I'm sure you would invite uh, viewers to do that at your at your website. Uh, Senator Obama, let me let me pick up on 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 the on the business of the record and and look at uh, something that was raised in the uh, in in Rich Samuel's introductory piece, and that is that the three of you basically, and and, and some of the major issues really feel the same way. We we saw the example about health care. What makes you different from the congressman and from Senator Trotter? Well, one of the things that we've talked about throughout this campaign is, is that I don't think there are a lot of ideological differences. I think all three of us are progressive urban Democrats. Uh, I think we share most views. Uh, we have some disagreements that have emerged over the couple of debates that all three of us have been at. You know, uh, Congressman Rush is uh, uh, more hesitant about campaign finance reform. That's a high priority for me. Uh, you know, Senator Trotter is uh, in discussions about taxes, has talked about flat taxes as a possibility. That's something that you know we may differ on but for the most part I think we agree ideologically I, I think that uh, the issue in this race really is leadership as, as your introductory piece noted this is a historic district and the question for uh, the voters in the first congressional district is who can best articulate and frame the issues that are most important uh, to voters in those dis uh, in the district and who can provide the leadership to organize resources uh, both federal and state uh, and municipal at the local level to make a difference on issues that count, like uh, education, uh, health care, uh, jobs and economic development. And my assessment is, is that my experience, not only as a legislator, but also as a civil rights attorney, as a community organizer, uh, gives me uh, the, uh, the leadership skills to provide, uh, to, to really make a difference in this race. Senator Obama, how do you respond to the concern that you are raising so much money from outside the district that in your case you will be quote beholden to interests outside the district well you know the truth of the matter is actually that uh, we have uh, raised about four hundred thousand dollars in this race uh, congressman rush i don't know exactly what he's raised but i think uh, he, he's indicated that he plans to raise about six hundred thousand uh... 
99% of our money comes from individuals uh, as opposed to PACs and approximately 40% of our money comes from individuals within the district. That's just itemized. Uh, in fact, we have probably more African American contributors and small donors who live inside the district than any of the candidates involved. Now it's true that I also have been able to raise money outside the district in part because I've got relationships uh, uh, throughout this city. And I think that's actually a benefit because I think that one of the things that we need uh, in this office is somebody who's able to uh, create coalitions and work across a wide spectrum uh, of, of interests and I think that's something I can provide. Senator Trotter, uh, getting back to the Tribune editorial that I quoted from earlier, of you, the editorial says, Trotter has been a capable senator, but it seems telling that his political sponsor, Cook County Board President John Stroger, is supporting Rush. How strong is your base? My base is very strong. What we know is 57% of the vote that comes out of the 1st Congressional District uh, comes out of my legislative district. Through the past five elections that I've won in Illinois General Assembly, I go down there with the number one vote out of all the members that sit there. That's more than the, the Democrats or uh, Republican, uh, be it black or white. So we have a very strong base and we're individuals who know the record, who've known the works that I've done and the works that I'm capable of doing. Uh, to say that I'm just capable uh, in doing my job is, is very a big understatement. Uh, I have done some miraculous things down there, some phenomenal things, and on behalf of our community, and that is uh, being the chief negotiator on the budget. I have brought back dollars to our community that's uh, unprecedented. We have brought back $55 million for the South End of Lakeshore Drive, a half a billion dollars just to rebuild the Dan Ryan. $45 million for the university that sits in my district, Chicago State, <coughs> excuse me, Chicago State University, $3 million for DuSable Museum. These are dollars in proportion to our $45 billion budget, uh, which says that we are really bringing back those things that's going to enrich and enhance uh, the lives in, of our community. You compare that to a $1.7 trillion budget that the United States has, uh, there's no comparison uh, that should be said. Congressman, uh, you mentioned some of the things that you've done. Is there one specific thing that you can point to that, that and, and tell the voters that this warrants my re-election? What is it that well, warrants I've already your re-election? I've already mentioned it. I mean, you, again, you I've, went through the list, I've, but is there I've, one thing in particular yeah, that, that let, strikes you as compelling about, evidence? Let's talk about the Inglewood leg of the, of the uh, Green Line. You know, had I not been the congressman from the 1st Congressional District, the CTA would have demolished that L. Uh, that leg of the Greenwood line by now. Senator Obama, not, do you grant him that? It would not, it would not, have, it would not be there. Well, do you grant him that? The, the, I, I agree that he supported uh, retaining the Green Line. I, I certainly, I think no. that's fair to I, say I, that... I led that, the charge. That, that, I helped uh, he find the money, that. the federal dollars. But, but Phil, can I also add, Englewood has been festering over there for almost 25, 30 years. For seven years that he's been in office, uh, he's acting as if it was the city of Atlantis and just popped up this year, that some action is actually being taken over there. Uh, he's had the ability and the resources and the friendships with the president that he could have been doing some very proactive things over there before Inglewood started festering into other communities. So there is great that now that you're discovering Senator it and bringing Senator something Senator to the table, Trotter, the Green the, Line, the South works, the and South. bringing dollars to the Green Let's Line. Let Senator finish, Congressman, and I'll get to you, sir. Go, Go ahead, ahead, Senator. Bringing uh, dollars to the Green Line, bringing dollars over there and, and bringing Hastert through the community uh, really hasn't really changed their quality of life. Right now, you've put finally some plans on the table, but uh, we have not still at this point in time seen any kind of action that's being taken. Congressman. Well, well Senator Trotter, I, I know that you're a wise man and you've seen a very, very astute on the issues, but I, let me ask you uh, if you would respond to the fact that the U.S. Steel, uh, the soft works, was, which I believe was located in your district, in, my, in, the, in, the, in your district, it's been uh, vacant, that land has been vacant for uh, 25 years now, and you've been in the Congress, I mean, in the, in the general, uh, mm -hmm. the state senator for uh, a number of years. Uh, that land has an enormous uh, potential mm -hmm. to help solve problems not only in the Inglewood community, but in the general South Side. I have never seen you uh, forward a plan to do anything with that South Work land, that South Works land uh, over there. And let me just tell well, you, that's the, not problem, true. the problem, if I could finish, the problem on the South Side in general, in terms of the uh, in, in terms of the joblessness and the lack of the economic power to, is the fact that once that Softworks plant closed down, nothing replaced it. And so you had all those jobs leaving 
the south side of the city uh -huh. of Chicago. Let's answer that question. No, just, you, just, you know what? Let's, let's not get back down to the south works. Okay. I mean, I, I know it's I know it's a it's an important issue, but but it's in the short time we in, excuse me. It also was privately owned, and they wanted to sell the whole land, oh. and it was a lot of remediation that had to go over there. Your there point is well taken. Let's move on to the next subject, please. And that is Senator Obama. One of the things that that one looks at Congressman Rush's record and the things that he says. If there's a Democrat, Democratic Congress that comes into uh, power this November, he's in line maybe to get some important committee assignments. His influence for the district, based on his seniority, could be uh, could be ratcheted up a notch. What's your response to that? Well, you know, I think that uh, seniority is important, but I think vision and imagination and, and hard work is more important. Uh, and the uh, you know, I think that Congressman Rush, for example, was not concerned about seniority when he ran against the previous congressman, Congressman Hayes, who he supplanted because he thought he could bring more energy and focus to the job. Uh, I feel the same way now that I can bring more energy and focus to the job. And I think you know, we were just talking about economic development and, and jobs in the district. Uh, you know, the south side of Chicago, by the congressman's own acknowledgement, has not uh, prospered at the same rate as uh, the north side or the northwest corridor. That's not entirely the congressman's fault. I think there are a lot of factors involved in that. But one of the things that we've talked about in this uh, campaign, and we've been very specific, is the, the need for uh, a strategy, an agenda for economic growth in the south side of Chicago. Uh, right now, we don't have one. And what would your uh, priorities be? Well, I think that the priorities would have to be combining uh, uh, education and workforce training to make sure that we've got a, uh, uh, the human capital uh, in place to compete in a high-tech, uh, high-wage economy, uh, and that we actually are not only attracting businesses into the area, but also uh, that we are training entrepreneurs and helping them grow their businesses. And one of the things that I've found in walking around uh, the, uh, the commercial strips in our area is, is that very few businesses that already exist in the, in, in the area actually know what kind of federal help they can get. Uh, part of it's just information flows. Uh, and one of the arguments I think I have against Congressman Rush in this race is that he has not been particularly ac accessible in terms of letting businesses know how the federal government can assist them in terms of growing their businesses and how we can market the community to attract new businesses in the community. We've got a, a lot of vacant land out there, uh, and I think that there would be a great interest in locating uh, jobs uh, in the community if, in fact, uh, uh, we did a better marketing job. S uh, Senator Obama, let me follow up with a question on that. Is one of the, one of the, uh, the criticisms that, that arises in connection with your candidacy is mm -hmm. you simply haven't been in the Senate very long, the State Senate. You have a limited track record in terms of time. Right. What, what is your argument uh, based on, on the, sh the one term that you've served in the Senate so far that, that makes you right. prepared for the, for the Congress? Well, it, I'm in my second term, but it's true that uh, certainly both uh, uh, Senator Trotter and, and Congressman Rush have, have been in uh, uh, elected office longer than I have. I can't deny that. Uh, I would argue, though, that uh, my experience previous to elected office uh, equips me for the job. You know, I have a background as an attorney. Uh, I've represented affordable housing organizations that build affordable housing, something that's a major issue in the district. Uh, I've chaired major philanthropic uh, efforts in the city, like the Chicago Annenberg Challenge that gave $50 million to prompt school reform efforts throughout the city. Uh, I've been a community organizer and helped design programs at the ground level. And so one of the things that I think we need as we enter into the new millennium is somebody who's got the skill set required uh, not only to deal with government, but also to be able to put government programs together with non-for-profits and the private sector to make things work for people in the district. So, Congressman. I, mean, yeah, I, I just like to say this. I mean, I really have a lot of respect for both of my challenges. That's why I'm working so hard. But, you know, uh, they have a record. I mean, Senator Barack, he represents a part of Inglewood. His district has always been in Inglewood. Uh, Inglewood's always been in his district. What has he done? I, I, I mean, what, okay, I, I, I let can, me, I can let tell me, you. Let me, uh, they have uh, records in the in the uh, in the state senate, in the state senate. What have they done? I they want they want they want to the they, district they last want, year. They want they want to, of course, because they're running for Congress. Now they all all of a sudden they can do a better job. Maybe they can. Maybe they can. I don't believe that they can because I think I've been, I believe that I've been one of the most effective members of the Illinois delegation, most one of the most effective members of Congress, representing my district in Washington, uh, and then coming back and leading on issues of importance to my constituency here at home. Senator okay. Schroeder, what would well, your priorities be, sir? Well, certainly we have to deal with economic development, but you have to look at the holistic approach of, of how we're going to really 
make our district much stronger and how we're really going to enhance the quality of life of individuals. What we've been hearing here is one is one who I believe is talking in rhetoric again and someone else is talking in theory. What we've been doing is trying to address the health care needs because we know health care is where everything begins. We know we can have the best school system in the world. We can have a computer on every desk. But if we have a child who needs glasses, they're not going to be able to see the screen. If we have children who cannot hear the, the lessons of brilliant teachers, they're not going to learn. What I've been able to do uh, in the state legislature uh, is craft one of the, the best health care programs for our kids, and it's called Kid Care. And that gives them that healthy start so they can start to learn, so they can go in and be prepared to learn. And then from there, when you have a, a healthy and an educated community, you can have individuals who are not just looking for jobs, and, and they both talk about job training, but career training for individuals. And that's part of uh, also putting in uh, programs in the curriculum, which is really going to pique the imagination, nurture those minds of individuals who don't want to just work at McDonald's, who would like to be the entrepreneurs in our community. Senator, how do you respond to the perception that you, both you and Senator Obama, are basically making a preparatory run in a sense because you sense political weakness on the part of the congressman and in effect, you're not just running this time around, but you're looking ahead two years down the road. Well, as an elected official, I'm always looking to the next election, but I plan on winning this one. But I'm, I'm now just running uh, to win this one and to make sure that we have a good start on what we have to do. I have a 12-year record in the Illinois General Assembly, and that is one of accomplishments, one who listens to the community and takes their ideas and make them into laws. Not just talk about them, not just look for a photo op, but also put my legs up under the table and make things happen. I have been able to, to really build coalitions down in Springfield. I've been able, using my negotiating skills, to walk across the side of the aisle, the other side of the aisle, and get things done. Aren't every, the three every, of you? every piece of legislation, I just wonder if I can finish this one thought, every right. piece of legislation that, that we put on the table in Springfield, I know that not only I have to get my colleagues, my 26 votes, but I need four votes on the other side. When you start out with that kind of premise, then you know what you have to do. And speaking I, of premises and what you have to do, aren't the three of you really depending, sort of counting on the other two to split the vote, to enable you to sort of walk through. Let me respond to your initial question, uh, the issue of, of Congressman Rush uh, perceived weakness, which I saw on the tape as well. Uh, you know, I actually thought Congressman Rush did a good thing running against uh, the mayor because I don't think anybody should have a pass. I don't think Congressman Rush in this situation should have a pass. I don't think the mayor should have a pass. I don't get a pass uh, for my uh, state senate seat. Uh, what I was concerned about in the race was the inability, I think, to uh, focus attention on the issues that really matter uh, in this city. And, and part of what's important about this... You mean Candidate Rush district, did not focus on that? Candidate Rush. And, and so, but, but the reason I say that uh, is to give credit where credit is due. I, I think that Congressman Rush did a brave thing uh, running, and I don't want it perceived that somehow he's being punished for that race. Mm -hmm. what I, I think what's important is, is that, uh, that we have a chance now to raise expectations of voters in terms of what the congressman can accomplish sure, I, I, in this I, congressman. I, I really wanted to, I certainly dis disagree with, with the senator, Senator Obama. Uh, he did get a pass in his first effort out uh, uh, in terms of running for the Senate. Uh, he and others uh, knocked uh, uh, his predecessor, Senator Alice Palmer, off the ballot. But how about so the he got, he, got a, he got a free pass on his first time But how about around. the political consequences of running for mayor? Do you feel that you were weakened politically as a result uh, of oh, losing? Absolutely, absolutely not. I believe that I was strengthened. I believe that uh, uh, people who uh, who uh, observed that election, people who uh, listened to the issues, they know that I brought out issues that were relevant, the issues that were concerned to them. The Congressman, also, I'm going to ask, I'm gonna ask you to no, continue. As the credits are rolling, I'll get back to you, Congressman, to finish your statement. I'd like to thank my guests for joining me tonight, State Senator Barack Obama, Congressman Bobby Rush, and State Senator Donnie Trotter, and I thank you for watching. Tomorrow night in this program, we'll hear from candidates for another office, Clerk of the Circuit Court. My colleague Elizabeth Brackett will be here at 7 and again at 11.30. And a reminder, if you'd like to suggest a question or if you'd like for us to send you an email in the afternoon telling you what topic we're doing that night, you can log on to our website at WTTW.com. I'm Phil Ponce. Hope to see you next time. You want to I finish, that, then I'll get I think, you. I think these challenges, they basically have misread the tea leaves. I'm very, very strong in the district. Strong because I have a record, a visible record, a record of engagement, a record of, 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 of uh, results a record of achievement, a record of being present and accessible. We'll find out. Misreading the, mis the tea we'll leaves? We'll find out in It may be visible, but it's not measurable. And what we talk about the seniority issue. Seniority was not important to the congressman nine months ago when he did run for mayor. Not saying that he should not have run.